this week on The Startup Life. The best way to sustain yourself, you know, business-wise is to keep those relationships because they know people too. And True. over time, those previous business and relationships can get you new business. All right, Startup Nation, so let's take flight with Corbin Carpenter, attorney and managing member of Carpenter Law PLLC. The Startup Life begins now. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother... Hey, Startup Nation, do you enjoy the startup life? Now you can let the world know with gear from the show. Choose from the label yourself, make your own luck, and making money t-shirts to tell your story of your path of entrepreneurship. Click the link in the show notes to purchase. All right, Startup Nation, so I hope you're ready to receive some value today. We got a special guest in the building today. We got my man Corbin Carpenter, C Squared over here. We're uh, Corbin yes, to Law. Sir. How's it going, man? What's going on, good brother? How you doing, man? I can't complain, can't complain. You ready to support some uh, knowledge in the Startup Nation today? I'm gonna try to do a little something, something. Okay. Try to do a little something, something, man. I got you, I got you, let's do it. So first things first, man, what's your story on your path of entrepreneurship? Well, my story, I guess, uh, I'm gonna take it back to the uh, beginning beginning man right. you know take it back to the beginning uh, it was a uh, 8 32 a.m uh, <laughs> really August 28th. <laughs> 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 we ain't got to go back that far man i I'm got kidding. you i'm kidding I got but no nah, man uh my story man uh you know native memphian uh mm -hmm. proud black man south memphis white haven raised product of the memphis city schools uh john p freeman ridge Way high school alumni gotcha went to university of tennessee knoxville okay. uh, actually sit on their board of directors now for the memphis chapter so oh nice shout out to my board of directors on uh on uh, ut knoxville mm -hmm. uh and then went to the university of memphis school of law for sure um raised like i said earlier man raised by two entrepreneurs from my parents absolutely uh, my mother absolutely. and father and i have an older brother charles man mm -hmm. and uh we can wait till that bell go off too sorry about that it's all good it's, it's that old good. school granddad clock man but uh, <laughs> it's all we, good. we keep it going in brother cool. it's all good go for but, it man um three main principles i really try to live by mm -hmm. uh you know our service advocacy and leadership i hear that you know i, I hear that i really feel like god put me on this earth you know, with the purpose to make an impact, to effectuate change, uh, mm -hmm. to help as many people as I can before For I sure. get out of here. For sure. You know, so man, I, I had like this long ingrained passion of just, you know, of service and trying to help others and everything. Uh, currently, you know, I'm actively engaged in uh, numerous, you know, nonprofits and Absolutely. community organizations in the city and have been pretty much throughout my entire life. Mm -hmm. So which brings me, I guess, to what I do professionally now. For sure. And professionally now, uh, you know, I'm an attorney, licensed mm -hmm. in Tennessee in the uh, District of Columbia. Uh, and practice alongside my father and my partner. Absolutely. Um, at uh, Carpenter Law PLLC. For sure. Um, where we primarily do, you know, corporate housing and transaction matters. Um, we practice corporate and municipal finance um, with the primary practice focus on public finance. Mm -hmm. And I guess for the listeners, I can kind of tell what municipal finance is because I get that question like yeah. 35 times yeah, a day. Yeah, break that down for us but a little bit. pretty much, you know, uh, and I'll say muni finance for okay. sure. That's what we say in the industry pretty much. Mm -hmm. But it's about revenue and, uh, but that's about the revenue and expenditure decisions of municipal governments. Okay. So it's about financing infrastructure through oper operating revenues and borrowing capital. Okay. And when municipalities need funding to finance certain capital capital projects, mm -hmm. uh, they'll issue uh, the bonds as a way to supplement the revenue for those projects. For sure, for sure. So as the industry currently is, it's about you know eighty thousand, eighty thousand you know issuers you know nationwide, mm -hmm. and pretty much when you issue bonds, it has to be issued by or on behalf of a political subdivision. Gotcha. So, you know, there's like states, towns, cities, counties, right. you know, school districts, housing projects, road and highway, um, you know, authorities, utility districts. Um, and also, you know, m municipal finance covers the revenues uh, that are used by the government. So intergovernmental transfers, user fees, mm -hmm. all kind of taxes, personal gotcha. tax, income tax, excise taxes and all that. And I know there was a long uh, explanation. <laughs> it's but all good. Looking at the question. So I it's guess how good. did I decide to become an entrepreneur? So right. 
again, man, like just, you know, just having that knowledge base from my, uh, you know, my parents. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I was, you know, blessed, you know, to learn the game early on. And I learned that if you want to survive in this world, right. uh, you um, have to, that one cannot simply follow the status quo. I hear that. You hire you, so you got to, you know, play the game. You got to learn the game. You got to master the game. Mm -hmm. and you got to teach the game. For sure. And, you know, I learned that people at the top control everything. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, we can say that this is the land of the free, you know, um, the land of the opportunity, you know. Yeah. But only for a certain type of people, certain gotcha. group of people, if you fit a certain mold. For sure. Not for, you know, the majority of the population for this country. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, people at the top in the government control everything and they write the rules to the game. Mm -hmm. And the rules to the game they write, they draft laws for, you know, property. They draft laws for enforcement, mm -hmm. contracts, monopolies, for sure. bankruptcy. You know, so out of those five kind of categories. So, for example, even bankruptcy. So, right. Bankruptcy, like corporations can go to court again and again and declare bankruptcy to, to protect their assets. Mm -hmm. But us, you know, former students, we can't go to, you know, bankruptcy court and reorganize our student debt. That ain't happening. Right. You know, so, and, you know, these rules that are made for those, you know, five categories don't come out of thin air. You know, right. they're intentionally drafted, you know, to reflect the interests of the people at the top. Right, right. And, you know, to me, an entrepreneur is a person who identifies a need and starts a business to fill their void. And we got a lot of needs in Memphis. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, you know, the need that, you know, I feel that this firm currently feels and that we will continue to feel is that feel of improving the economic infrastructure of different municipalities. Gotcha. And just me trying to, you know, learn the game. And it is very, you know, it's uh, numerous types of bonds that can be issued in the you know, the type of bonds we primarily issue, we work with, you know, um, governmental bonds, you know, revenue bonds, conduit bonds, private activity bonds. I know I'm just calling out bond names, but, you. you know, all these bonds pretty much go into, you know, uh, capital, uh, capital projects, you know, um, mass transit, utilities, airport revenue bonds, you know, uh, bonds of that sort. But gotcha. the bonds I'm really trying to look for are bonds that can be issued to improve, you know, inner city neighborhoods. Gotcha. Because, you know... Even in Memphis, you know, well, primarily in Memphis, rather, um, you know, a lot of attention is given to, you know, downtown, midtown. For sure. You know, for sure. not much attention is and priority is given to your Frasers, your Out East, your Frasers, South Memphis, and all that. Mm -hmm. Those are last on the list if they're on the list at all. Gotcha. And, you know, I do feel like with uh, municipal finance, it can afford me the opportunity to potentially explore that option. Gotcha. And, you know, me just, that being my mindset, I mean, I'm extremely optimistic. And so are you. I and I Absolutely. feel like every entrepreneur has to be optimistic. For sure. Because For sure. if, you know, we're not optimistic enough, you, you know, we, you know, have a hard time, you know, um, to keep going. So mm -hmm. entrepreneurs are, all, uh, are optimistic enough to believe in themselves and their vision, aware enough to see the problems around them, mm -hmm. stubborn enough to keep going. Absolutely. And bold enough to try again and again. So that quote means a lot to me because, you know, you have to be optimistic. You have to be cognizant of your surroundings and you have to be stubborn enough to keep going. You can't quit. For sure. And, you know, living in this system, but having the freedom and the latitude to navigate through it, mm -hmm. informed, and add my own free will is why I became entrepreneur. No, you're that. Entrepreneur means, you know, being in full control of your destiny. Absolutely. You know, you, you touched on a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of technical <laughs> stuff. For your, no, no, that's yeah. fine. Don't. It's, it's all good. It's all good. But there, there's two things I wanted to ask you about. First of all, how's it working with your dad? What's that like? Man, um, <laughs> I enjoy it, actually. Okay. You know, okay. I uh, definitely enjoy it. Um, you know, he actually, you know, he's not a micro or macro manager. Okay. He uh, actually, you know, everything he does, I do. Gotcha. You know, just like, you know, today, you know, he's um, out of town for, you know, today and tomorrow. So I'm running the show. Gotcha. And, you know, he does a great job. Of, and really, I do. I really appreciate that. But mm -hmm. he refers to me in business as his partner and not his son. I hear that. I hear and that. because, you know, you know, when you refer to someone as your son, you may get the aww, and yeah. people may not respect you as That's a for sure. business person. For sure. And me being young, me being black, me being in the industry, that you don't see people like me in at all. Absolutely. You need you all know, the credibility you can get. Definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. And so that initial credibility that he gives me you know, all I got to do is come and prove myself. And that's mm -hmm. what I'm doing. You I know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty well versed in this industry. I've been doing it, 
you know, about three years now. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been interning here the last, you know, couple of summers, whatever. I've been an attorney maybe for a, about a year now. Gotcha. So, man, but I love it though, man. I hear that. You, you know, I can tell. We, I can we, tell. We, we both have our own, uh, our own styles and everything. <laughs> for sure. Uh, you know, I, uh, you, you know, we're both stubborn too. So, and which is good though. I mean, we both got to hold our ground and everything. Entrepreneurs but, you know, usually are. Definitely. <laughs> you know, but I definitely enjoy it, man. I'm, uh, you know, privileged and blessed to just work with the best. I hear that. You know, to learn, you know, to learn something so difficult, dense, and complex, mm-hmm. you know, and he's the best, and I want to be better than him. I got you. And he got knows you. that, and he's, and then we both are going to make sure that happens. I hear that. You know, earlier when we was talking about entrepreneurship and, you know, you got to keep going, be stubborn, this, that, and the other, a lot of times people don't talk about the mental part of it. Mm-hmm. Like there, there's the checks and balances, there's the keeping the doors open, but there's the mental part. Talk about that a little bit, the mental part of being an entrepreneur. Exhausting. <laughs> um, gotcha. Man, you know, I can't even, you know, formulate my thoughts right now because I'm on six hours of sleep. I hear for that. Two days, like I told you. Right, but, right. You know, um, you know, the mindset is definitely that has to be your strongest attribute mm-hmm. because if you don't have a strong mind, then, you know, how you get up in the morning, how you come in every day and grind it out, how will you not only grind it out for yourself, but having energy and the wherewithal to make sure that your employees are equally grinding out just as hard as you. I hear that. Because your business, you can't run a business by yourself. No, you can't. And two, you can't have employees sitting around getting a free check. That's true, too. So, (laughs) you know, I come in every day ready to work and get it, and I expect the same from them. I hear that. So let me ask you this, man. You know, was it always in the cards, you know, as being an attorney, or did you ever ever think about something else when you were younger besides jumping off, you know, samurai swords? <laughs> <laughs> that's inside that, joke. That's inside joke, startup nation. But go ahead, man. <laughs> man, you know, a lawyer was always. I mean, being an attorney was always on the list. But for I mean, sure. I, I mean, for sure. But you know, it wasn't number one at first. I got you. You know, uh, and then as I got older, it moved up the list. For sure. But you know, I mean, I can remember. You know, first, second grade, I'm going to the NBA. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, I mean, you know, you know, like I'm definitely, you know, want to do something like that's what we saw on TV coming up. For sure. You For know, sure. we saw the Penny Holloways, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant and everything. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I say around third grade that it kind of clicked for me. OK. Not to be an attorney, uh-huh. but it clicked for me to know that whatever I did in life, I want to help people. I hear that. So I hear that. third grade, short story. So third grade, what happened was it was um some uh, lady got in some motorcycle accident, you know, um, mm-hmm. lost both her legs, I think. Mm. So um, she was some family to someone at the school. So we had a fundraiser in my third grade class. So some kind of fundraiser to, you know, just contribute some money and everything to the, uh, the lady and, um, and her family. For sure. Um, so around third grade, you know, in my mind, I thought I was big balding, I guess. <laughs> so I had like, you know, in, in my bank, you know, sock, or whatever like that. I gotcha. had maybe, I think it was $130 mm-hmm. saved up. It was all my money. For well, third grade, that's a lot of money. It, hey, right. you know, so, right. so I came in school the next day and I dropped off the whole 130 mm-hmm. And um, my teacher was like, um, do your parents know about this? And I was like, no. They, they, so she called my mom. And was like, uh, is this okay? Like, it, first of all, is this his money? Because right. it might be yours or for something sure. like that. For sure, but, for uh, sure. Second of all, is this okay? This is a, this is a lot of money. This is, you know, and then she was like, hey, I mean, that's his money and that's his decision. And, you know, they were shocked and blown away. But I was just like, I mean, she needs help. So right. whatever it's I got. that simple, right? Is it, it, like, so it was that right. simple to me. Absolutely. Like, whatever Absolutely. I got, you know, I want her to have, you know, the help. I mean, it's not a much and I did, you know, realize and appreciate that. But I'm like, maybe they can help out a little bit. You For know, sure. Definitely. And, you know, they were just so blown away. But, you know, like you said, it was just, I was like, all right. You right. know, that's, I felt it was something that I was supposed to do. Gotcha. So that's when it clicked. And I'm like, okay, I don't know what I want to be when I grow up yet. Mm-hmm. But whatever I do decide on and, you know, what I want to be, it has to be part of it. It has to be part of it where I can really help people and help as many people as I can. Understood. Understood. Thank you for sharing that, man. That, that's that's a powerful stuff. And I, I like hearing stories like that because it, it, it helps tell the story of where you're going in the future. And, and so, you know, and, and, you know, where you, you know, kind of where it started from, right? where it sure. clicked for you, for sure. So sure. thank you for sharing that, man. That's great stuff. So who or what inspires you as an entrepreneur and why? I'll give you who I am what. Okay. So who 
family and loved ones. I got you. Know, you. Inspire me because I do want to be able to provide for them. For sure. You know, build a legacy, absolutely, build generational absolutely. wealth and all that. And you know, I know I told you about my mom and dad mm -hmm. off air, but I do want to say something about them on air too. Okay, go ahead. Um, so you know, those two individuals definitely inspired me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, mom and you know dad. You know, both native Memphians. Both South Memphis veterans. I hear that. Uh, my mom born and raised, you know, on foot homes. And after that, uh, shot on over, you know, to Longview Heights in South Memphis. Mm -hmm. raised, born and raised on, uh, well, raised on Gage Street. Uh, Pop man, uh, he uh, comes from uh, South Memphis, but raised on Jessamine. Then uh, moved to McKellar mm -hmm. uh, around 10 or 12 years old. And that's the house I live in now, actually. So gotcha. I live in okay. South Memphis myself, man. Okay. So right now still. Um you know, um, and then after that, you know, my mom went to University of Memphis for a college. Uh, my father went to Howard, uh, okay. undergrad, Notre Dame Law School for him. My mom mm -hmm. went to uh, grad school at the U of M. Okay. When they both graduated, you know, they were like, wow, like, you know, we're the only ones in our family to even get to this point. Like, what now? Like, life got to get better. Right. Nah. Mm. They came back, you know, uh, to Memphis in 1978, couldn't find a job. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, just imagine, you know, how hard it was for a black person to, you know, come on and find a job. If it's hard in 2018, imagine how hard it was, you know, in 1978. For sure. So professionally, man, um, you know, my mom is a psychotherapist. Her own bi her business name is uh, Healthy Connections Consulting. Okay. Um, and of course, my father, you know, my partner here and everything. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it was interesting being raised by two entrepreneurial parents, though. And, I hear that. And I'm sure that your daughter, when she gets older, she'll have this same kind of story, too. <laughs> right. Like, you, you know, just, uh, you know, you come home like entrepreneurs. We don't have a nine to five. We, right. We, we got a, you know, 24-7, don't even know what that is, <laughs> right. man. So I remember <laughs> sure. nights, man, I'm, you know, just sitting by my mom watching cartoons. She's working. Mm -hmm. you, you know, I see, you know, my dad going to work Saturday, su Sunday mornings. So that became, you know, normal to me. And mm -hmm. that's what I do now. I gotcha. still work weekends, you know. My, you know, business hours, I guess I tell people eight to six, but it's really eight to whenever I get done working. <laughs> right. Or whenever I just get up and get to the office. Right. You know, but, um, you you know, just, you know, having that kind of background, you, you know, and that, I guess, you know, being raised that way, then that is definitely who inspired me. Mm -hmm. Now, what? That's a different thing. Okay. So, of course, well, you know, carrying on the family legacy of creating For your sure. own, on your own, controlling your life and all that. But what? is really because the way the world is changing. Right. And, you know, the American economy, how it's set up now, is almost twice as large as it was in 1980. Mm -hmm. But the median wage has gone nowhere. It has not. So we're all, absolutely so, right. So where has all the money gone? Right. Straight to the top. Mm -hmm. And, you you know, hidden inside those little five rules of the game I mentioned earlier, so money flows out of, you know, the pockets of average American citizens like you and me. Right. And they go into the profits of these major industries, executives, and For shareholders. Sure. And as income and wealth goes to the top, so does political power. And as political power goes to the top, the top has more and more influence, you know, over those rules of the game. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm finna get my Bernie Sanders for a quick second. Go but, for it. you know, as far as, <laughs> like, big corporations, you know, Wall Street and very wealthy people, the top 1%, like... Mm -hmm. You know, they lobby to change the rules, you know, and put them in their favor. And subsequently, or, you know, in turn, those rules hurt the other 99% right. of Americans. And it may have started, it is not may, it definitely started in the early 70s. So as far as, you know, just the increase in just corporate lobbying, like they very subtly changed the rules to the game. And all of that, and all the net effect of that mm -hmm. gave us Trump. Now, I'm okay. gonna uh, take it back a little bit. <laughs> so, you know, just an example, man, with just the Glass-Steagall Act, mm -hmm. you know, 1933. So the right. Glass-Steagall Act was to provide for safer and more effective use of assets of banks to mm -hmm. regulate interbank control and right. prevent, you know, undue diversion of funds into speculative operations. Mm -hmm. So when it got repealed, and you know, I think the early 70s, mid 70s, you know, the act was supposed to protect people's savings. Right. You know, from being used by Wall Street investors and everything. So when these risky investment banks merge with the uh, commercial banks, that caused, you know, that was one of the primary reasons for the stock market crash. Right. And when that happens, you know, or when big corporations, you know, pretty much are defunct or bankrupt, what happens? Mm -hmm. A bailout. Mm -hmm. And who pays for the bailout? We Taxpayers. Do. Yeah. <laughs> so 
Another example, of course, you know about Citizens United. Mm -hmm. um, of course, when they got overturned by the Supreme Court, you know, dark spending and campaign, uh, you know, campaigns almost tripled. Right. You, you know, and mm -hmm. of course, you know what dark money is, you know, campaign uh, contributions that are yep. not, you know, so. Right. And, you know, with the lobbying, you know, um, about, so this is a, a, a true statistic. Of course, all of it's true. Right. But about half of the retiring, re retiring senators now and a third of retiring House members register as lobbyists, which it used to be in the 1970s under 5%. Now you're looking at 50% of it. So what happens is this circular revolving door of, mm -hmm. pol uh, of, of political influence is going to keep happening. Right. So what's going on is when people say, well, let's wait till the old people die out. No, that's <laughs> no. not going to work. Right, because basically they pass that information down to the next generation and the, do and the door keeps going egg right exactly right exactly <laughs> exactly so and then so i want to give a small history on uh so go uh, for it so and then i'll get one more and i'm done my bernie sanders uh, tip <laughs> okay. right now, man. but so in 1971 the u.s chamber of commerce asked this lawyer lewis powell to write a memorandum about uh the american um economy the current american economy mm -hmm. so i mean i think it was called the powell memo Okay. So in this memo, though, a couple of quotes. Um, it was it said the American economy, the American economic system is under broad attack. Businesses must learn the lesson that political power is necessary, and that such power must be assiduously cultivated, and that when necessary, it must be used aggressively and with determination, without embarrassment and without reluctance. So pretty much this memo turned into like a big manifesto, you know, right. for newly created businesses, businesses oriented think tanks and lobbying groups, you know, all kind of, you know, in professional organizations like, more for, for example, they are created today because of that, mm -hmm. like ALEC, you know, the American Legal Account, Legal Exchange Council, you okay. know, Business Roundtable. And, you know, lastly, like, I'm sure you even seen or heard of this, so a term called corporate welfare. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Corporate welfare, you know, you can find that thing almost anywhere in, in, in any law, state, federal, whatever, and it can be found in the tax code, appropriation bills, trade laws, but it's pretty much financial assistance given by the government mm -hmm. to profit making companies in right. the form of, you know, tax incentives or, or subsidies. And, you know, more often than not, those pretty much, you know, have no economic justification at all. Right. You know, um, tax subsidies to corporations cost, you know, taxpayers tens of billions of dollars every year. Mm -hmm. And in Tennessee, I think it's like uh, $2.5 billion a year. Gotcha. Alone. Let me ask you something real quick about that because, you know, you know, you may have somebody who's listening out there and they say, you know, they don't have any justification at all. I guess I'm being devil's advocate here, okay. if you will. When we talk about, you know, bailouts and this and the other, okay. right? Sure. And so... We hear sometimes that like they needed to be bailed out because too many Ameri too many of the American people depend on whether it be Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Chase Bank, uh, okay. uh, this, that, and the other. Whether it be through pensions, whether it be through insurance, whether it be through whatever. Does that am I making sense there or? Yes. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, I guess just playing devil's advocate. So, right. I guess you know their argument will be you know bail us out because we're saving jobs. Right. Or whatever the case because, may be. Because, yeah. yeah. Because we're, mm -hmm. we're saving jobs because we are a pillar in our community in, in our respective communities. Right. You know. So, for example, you know, you got GM and you know up north and everything that probably employ maybe half of the population up there. Gotcha. You know stuff like that. But at the end of the day, no. <laughs> okay, I, I, fair I, enough. I, I, fair I, enough. I, like I said, I just want to play devil's advocate because I, I know because you, you know you, that argument is out there, right? It, so. I mean, it definitely <laughs> is, and you, you know these things that are in place. I mean, if used correctly, mm -hmm. and and how they should be used, right. I, I mean, it, it it could definitely you know uh, yield some 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 tangible benefit to a For lot sure. more people. For sure. But you know how the current laws are written written and whatnot, it really only benefits people oh, at the top. For sure. For sure. Even if that benefit to you know the middle class who usually get pinched in those in those regards. Right. Even if that benefit is mi minimal, it still mostly benefits those the top one percent, top two percent, whatever the case may be. So no, I'm on board with you. I just want to, like I said, I just want to play devil's advocate. Hey, for hey man, I hear you, but, <laughs> you, but but man, you know we as a people we do need a better understanding of where we live in. We absolutely and do, and the people in it. We do, for and, sure. You know. Um, I'm inspired because just having like the realistic notion and thought that, you know, you know, the type of law that I practice, mm -hmm. I can, you know, potentially effectuate some real tangible change. For sure. You know, that definitely, you know, 
inspires me in educating people. Another thing, like educating people about, you know, the importance of, you know, financial literacy. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you know, not only should they be talked about in schools, but the how about but the household as well. We, you know, you know, we as blacks and minorities, you know, definitely have to stop, you know, making the uh, topic so taboo. For sure. And for you sure. know, definitely put more importance to financial literacy. You know, talking about you know credit, talking about real estate, the importance of home ownership, the importance mm-hmm. of having insurance. You, you know, because um, you know, I know quite a few people in my family, like. You know, if they can't really understand it or, you know, they don't want to talk about it. You, Absolutely. You, 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 you know, and if they can't afford it, they say, why talk about it? You know, right. but that's the world we live in. That's how the country works. That's how the world works. Mm-hmm. So we need to be more knowledgeable, more colleagues and stuff like that. For sure. For sure. Thank you for sharing that, man. Uh, let me ask you this, you know, and I, I know it was dad who, who started, you know, Carpenter Law, this, that and the other. But before you became a partner, right? What do you wish you would have known before you st- before you became a partner? Ooh, a lot, okay. man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I mean, just off top, man, I, I wish I would have known how real the ground was. Okay. I okay, so I knew how real it was, but I can't, but I couldn't appreciate how real it was. For and sure. Then, like j- just how the old saying goes, you can read about something all day, or Absolutely. actually, you know, do something, but until you're in it yourself, right. You don't appreciate it. It's all theoretical it. up in that man, point. That point. Man, and it becomes practical real quick. <laughs> uh, then, uh, yeah, so then, you know, but, you know, like I said earlier, man, like this is not a nine to five job, man. Right. And it's, it's more like 24 7. You got to handle everything from A to Z. For sure. Um, you know, um, entrepreneurship, I feel like it's a lifestyle. You, you know, like you have an innate need to grow, create, and build on something. For sure. And like you said earlier, when you walked in, man, you must be a, a master plate juggler. Right. Because you, you got so many things going Absolutely. on, so many different tasks going on. You got to be able to switch on and off because if not, you get caught slipping. That's for sure. And if you get caught slipping, then that's a problem. Right. Because it's only you in here. You don't have a corporation, big corporation backing you. Exactly. If you make a mistake, everybody knows. Exactly. So, and, you know, I wish, you know, I could would have known, you know, how strategic you have to be every day, Mm -hmm. every day Mm -hmm. to, you know, maximize your time, to maximize your employees' time. Um, You have to come into work every day ready to work. And, you know, so just because the night before I come in the office, you know, so just say we got a Sunday night or Monday night or whatever. I'm already planning out for the next day, really the whole week. Right. But especially for the next day. And not only my work, but my paralegal's work. Right. You know what I'm saying? If if I have, you know, questions that, you know, I want to definitely run past my father, it's already planned out. Right. Work for my um, office manager and everything. Mm-hmm. Like you have to be able to maximize and be effective and efficient every day the best way you can be. Absolutely. No, and I, I understand exactly what you're talking about because, like, you know, even though you have, you know, you're planning for the week out, but, like, that very next day is a little bit more cemented than, mm-hmm. than you know, two days, three days, four days. So, no, exactly sure. what you're talking about for sure, sure, for sure. Now, let me ask you this, man. Like, what did you learn for your worst boss you've ever had? And this can, not necessarily a boss, but, like, maybe say uh, a professor or something like that. What did you learn from them? Quite a few things. Okay. Quite, quite, okay. <laughs> quite a few things. I mean, but um, that your work ethic, uh, personality, mm-hmm. your mood, right, your uh, professionalism, you know, it's contagious. For sure. And it all trickles down to all uh, to to your employees, and mm-hmm. because they're watching you, and uh, they'll mimic you. We got a, a policy here that it's only four of us here. Gotcha. Where uh, we may be a small boutique firm, but we're a high volume practice. Absolutely. Whatever you're going through at home, you know, we sympathize, empathize, we do. But check that at the door. Mm-hmm. Because when you come here, you coming into the concrete jungle. And this is the grind house here. <laughs> and everyone has to pull their own weight for this thing to work. Gotcha. If everyone ain't pulling their own weight, then the train don't move. Right. Um, I do. Um, I did learn that entrepreneurs have to be people oriented. Got Okay. I've okay. had some, I guess, some anti-people uh, <laughs> uh, bosses in the past okay. that didn't like people very much. Gotcha. Uh, entrepreneurs have to be friendly. Absolutely. Definitely, man. We have to be very approachable. We have to, you know, and get out of network. And that's mm-hmm. part of the job, too. Mm-hmm. You know, people who are not entrepreneurs, I mean, you know, some may network for fun. We right. network for survival. Absolutely. I, you, you you know, so we, Absolutely. we network to create new relationships 
And it's it's important to create new relationships and to all expand and, you know, meet new people, meet new sure. potential business partners and ventures. And definitely as well to also to like maintain and strengthen the ones you have. Mm-hmm. A lot of, so I make this comparison a lot. I make the comparison of entrepreneurship to, you know, cell phone companies. Bear with me for a second. I got you. So, Go for it. With entrepreneurs, you know, just with that, you know, with cell phone companies, how they always give more incentives and to new people who come in and join their cell phone company. Like, mm-hmm. if you come and join, you know, spreading the team up or whatever, we give you a free phone and all that, all that, all that. Right. Hold on. I've been with y'all four or five years and I don't get anything. Mm-hmm. So my bill went up, actually. Hold on. Right. So, hold on. So, <laughs> got to pay for them new phones everybody exactly, else getting. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, just, you know, definitely, you know, always remembering who you currently serve and you know sure. have them as priority for sure you know the new hotness ain't always the best thing mm-hmm. you know the thing the the best way to sustain yourself you know business wise is to keep those relationships because they know people too they, and true. over time those previous business and relationships can get you new business so um also learn you must regret like that you must possess the grit and be willing to embrace and endure the grind mm-hmm um, and most importantly, an entrepreneur has to be able to build a team that cares about their job and the work that they do. Mm. We have all know that most people in this world just want to do the bare minimum, mm-hmm. get their check, go about their business. Right. You know, and, um, you, you know, that is, what we do here is definitely very difficult and it's not sexy like you know we are you, you know like the like yeah. we're behind the scenes mm-hmm. we do all the dirty work you know but we get it done and it's very important someone has to do it right you know and it's a lot of reading a lot of you know technical a lot of meticulousness with it and you know if you're not willing to do that if you're not willing to kind of go above and beyond if you're not willing to so our employees they work nine to five if you know you're out of here at, you know, 4.59 or 5 every day kind of thing and not willing to stay over, mm-hmm. then you won't be here very long. All right. Thank you for sharing that, man. I, I appreciate that. And you, you speak about a few things, but the one thing that really stood out is the networking piece. Mm-hmm. A, a lot of people don't mm-hmm. understand that part because when you talked about, you know, some people who have like the 9 to 5, they network for fun. We never work for survival. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't understand that part because when you're building a company, right, like, you know, like if you, and this is no knock to somebody who works at FedEx or right. International Paper, sure. day or another, but like you have that infrastructure behind you and that's propelling you mm-hmm. to do what you need to do. But when you build something on your own, you have to create said infrastructure. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people don't understand that. So I, I'm, I'm glad you pointed that out. Yes, sir. Now, I know you're going through, you know, a little bit of rebranding here and this, that, and the other. So, I, I want to know, you know, how do you market, advertise, get the word out there, the Carpenter Law is here to, you know, to do the work? So, this is uh, mm-hmm. where, and I do appreciate him for this because, mm-hmm. you know, my father, uh, he, um, you know, lets me work my shrimps. Okay. And, you know, I do the same for him. Gotcha. Uh, you, know, um, you know, he's old school, man. So mm-hmm. his way of marketing and advertising is, you know, just the work product itself. Gotcha. Your reputation, personal relationships. You know, as far as, you know, having a website or LinkedIn, you, you know, something <laughs> like that. You, you know, that's that's a little bit too new school for him. But, <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> but, you know, it's really important to have a hybrid of both of those. For sure. For and, sure. You know, um, so with the rebranding, as you know, you know, going from uh, Charles E. Carpenter, a professional corporation, the Carpenter Law PLLC, mm-hmm. man, that process is a pain. Mm. And but, you know, um, it is something that, you know, I'm happy to definitely be leading and be a part of. It's like, you know, that project is like my baby, I mean, so to say, you know, like that's the project he gave to me and said, look, you know, you pretty much lead this project and it's big. I mean, I'm pretty much creating a whole new logo for something that's been around for 40 years. For sure. And, you know, so definitely had to associate with a good friend of mine, Kenneth Worlds, mm-hmm. um, uh, 3G, uh, uh, one of the best graphic designers I have ever come across in my life. Gotcha. Um, he is currently doing our uh, rebranding right now, and um, we definitely we're at rest as well too. Because not only are we rebranding, uh, you know, just our logo and um, you know stationery and all that, but we actually, like I told you, doing trying to potentially do, you know, inside, you know, exterior and interior renovations to the firm. So mm-hmm. right in between 
working the actual job, managing employees. I'm meeting with architects, you right. know, throughout the day or whatever, calling and yeah, having conference calls with, you know, Mr. Worlds and whatnot and just trying to do all these side projects, but at the same time focusing on the primary thing that pays the bills. Right. For sure. So, and and I, I think I uh, may have mentioned it to someone um, in STS about this, but mm-hmm. uh, say as I always say that your brand is the first thing people see mm-hmm. and your reputation is the first thing that people hear. Absolutely. And it is definitely important and pivotal for you or anyone to invest in their brand. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, people will say stuff about you, you know, anyway. But, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The brand is definitely the first thing they see, man. So this should definitely, you know, have priority and, you know, be very important to any business. Absolutely. absolutely. It's the first salesman. Definitely. It's the first salesman. It's the first salesman you hire. It's the first thing people see. It's the first thing on letterheads. It's any other. Mm-hmm. So, no, Agreed. I definitely agree with that for sure. Yes, what you learn from your biggest failure, Corbin? Ooh, how much time do you got? I got a little time. <laughs> 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 Man, um, I learned that resilience is necessary, mm-hmm. necessary for survival. I hear that. Um, being successful in any business or any entrepreneur, for that matter, you have to have resilience. You have to have. You have to persevere. You have to have resourcefulness. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to be able to bounce back from your losses that you take. You're gonna take some losses. You're mm-hmm. gonna have probably. You, you know, you probably have more losses than you thought you ever would. Right. You know. You know, why do we fall? So we can learn to pick ourselves back up. You know, man, I learned how strong I was. I hear that. You know, one doesn't know how strong he is until Til you're tested. he is tested, <laughs> right. pushed to his limit, um, mm-hmm. and have no option but to fight back or submit. There it is. You know, I, I learned to have a positive attitude, you know, to have a, a glass half full mentality mm-hmm. that has a tremendous impact on your daily energy and just, you know, like perception. And the world will beat you up enough daily. So That's don't true. so don't do it to yourself. <laughs> right. If you can help it. Right. If you can of help course. It, of course. You know, uh, work ethic is something you can't teach. You have to want it. Right. You have to want it, man. Um, just like the old saying goes, you don't always have to be the smartest person in the room, but make sure no one in that room outworks you. There it is. Uh, most importantly, I learned patience. <laughs> Still working on that right now. <laughs> Still working on that right now. It's a work in progress. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. But, you know, God has a plan, man. And, you know, everything happens for a reason. Absolutely. So, you know, you can't, you know, you can't rush the process. I hear that. So, you know, I'm, so I definitely, uh, oddly enough, oddly enough, and this may be the sleep talking, but I, <laughs> you know, I mean, but I enjoy the grind, man. I enjoy the long nights and everything. Mm-hmm. I enjoy, you know, you know, reading and learning new things and not getting it the first time because it's so dense and so difficult, but mm-hmm. me not stopping until I get it. Gotcha. Because I'm not trying to just be just another lawyer out here. I'm trying to be the best at what I do. I hear that. I hear that. Um, and with that learning, you have to be, you know, focused, driven, and hungry daily, man. And consistency is the key to all of that. Mm-hmm. Consistency is the key to all of that. For sure. Entrepreneurs consider themselves lifelong learners, always engaging, constant professional development. What does that mean to you and what are you learning now? Is it books, podcasts, audio books? What works? No, when you can fit that in, of course. Man, <laughs> well, uh, I have actually started listening to podcasts this year because of you. So oh, don't do that. Out. Don't do that. So, shout out to, uh, <laughs> don't so, do that. you know, shout out to Al's <laughs> LLC. Uh, you know, you guys have turned me on to something new. You and your lovely wife, Kenda, I appreciate y'all. We appreciate man. you for saying but, that. I mean, honestly, man, that means everything to me. Um, you know, I always say that, you know, I'm a lifelong student to the game. Right. Um, my mom always told me, um, quoted, and says, I remember back when I was four years old, she always said, the more you read, the more you know, mm-hmm. the more you know, the further you go. There you go. Like, man, just I just said, I, I crave knowledge, man. Right. I, I, I crave it. I it's crave like, it. It's, it's corny and cliche, but it's corny and cliche because it works. Right, right, right. <laughs> like, man, like, man, like, I... <laughs> because it works. It works. And, you know, if you put the work in, man, and you are hungry for something, mm-hmm. then you go get it, man. Like, I crave knowledge. Like, I crave food. I, I crave that. water, man. Like, I'm, I, I'm so seriously want to be the best to be successful man you have to have a passion for learning mm-hmm. you know learning from your competitors mm-hmm. learning from your employees learning you know from your customers you know clients rather for sure you know your success that's pivot like that's essential to your success and survival as a business mm-hmm. and 100 percent of all successful entrepreneurs have one thing in common what's that that they never gave up there it is that they never gave there up. it is and you know entrepreneurship includes a lot of risk but the reward it gives and the reward it gives of creating and growing a legacy mm-hmm. 
I'm gonna take that chance. I got you. I'm gonna take that chance. Right. But you know, right now I'm learning uh, municipal finance, like I said earlier, sure. and everything associated sure. with it. I gave you a little preliminary, I, I guess, kind of you know a snippet of what it is. But right. I, uh, I guess I talk about it a little bit more. Okay, go for it. But uh, but basically, professional development for all of us. Yes, sir. Go for it. I'm gonna try to do a little something, man. But, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> you know, but in a nutshell, man. But because of you know the way the economy is now, as far mm-hmm. as like global, like globalization, urbanization, for sure. You know, it's really a challenge for local governments to keep cities economically viable, mm. uh, and you know, trying to deliver a high level of services, you for know, sure. to their residents and. Try Trying to keep taxes taxes sufficiently low. Mm-hmm. That's a that that is a true challenge, and you know the growth of these urban populations are creating serious challenges um, for government. You know, in terms of you know air and water pollution, you know transportation mm-hmm. gridlock, you know lack right. of affordable housing, right. uh, inadequate waste collection, uh, deteriorating infrastructure, and uh, and uh, of course income polarization. Right, we all know about that for sure. For sure, and you know with Memphis. You, you know, just, you know, for example, you know, the transportation gridlock. I mean, we have big mass transit issues here. Mm. And that ties into a lot of things, especially, you know, uh, the unemployment numbers. Because a lot of people don't have vehicles to get right. to their job interviews, to even get to work, you know, to, you know, even get to the grocery store. You even get to right. to get to simple things they need for basic necessities. Mm. You know, with the uh, shortage of affordable housing, you know, you have people and Memphis who live in substandard living conditions. Mm-hmm. And no one should live in some of the places that these people here live in. Not at all. No one. Inadequate waste collection. You know, I know a few areas in my own, you know, neighborhood in South Memphis where you have a, just a magnitude of tires stacked up, like six, seven feet tall. You, you, you know, like, and that creates, you know, uh, a lot of bacteria, like especially when it rains and you have different mud and checks mosquitoes and different insects and whatnot. I mean, mm-hmm. you have people over in the area breathing this stuff every day. Right. You know, so that definitely affects, you know, people's health. You know, just me, when I'm dry, I drive home every night, I see this big, like, smog of black smoke, you know, mm-hmm. in the air because, you know, I live by, you know, factories and everything by my neighborhood. Right, by the right, train for tracks. sure, so for sure. So people in certain zip codes in Memphis, if you have certain living conditions like that daily, yeah, they'll take 13 years off your life. You know, just the article that surfaced a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not surprised by that. Right. Like certain zip codes in Memphis, you know, people are affected detrimentally, you know, health wise because of those conditions. Um, you know, issues like that hurt a lot of cities because to, you know, be globally competitive, you know, a, a city needs to, you know, have those various things in place For sure. to attract, you know, people and attract different businesses mm-hmm. and whatnot. And but although these difficulties do exist. You know, cities and municipalities do have to do a better job of uh, managing their finances responsibly. Of course, of course. Um, you know, any efforts made with economic development, you know, you must be sure you want to capitalize on efficiency and effectiveness. You know, maximize each community's, you know, social, cultural, economic, um, environmental value. Mm-hmm. You know, so two things too with that. So. Private, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little deep now. No, go ahead, so, go ahead, go for it. Uh, private investors, you know, when they look to invest in a different, you know, like like a particular city, rather, mm-hmm. you know, they look at the quality of life factors. For sure. You know, like diversity tolerance, a lively art scene, um, recreational opportunities, mm-hmm. you know, high quality public schools, strong neighborhoods, you know, and as far as, you know, access to capital markets, capital markets, so... I'm going to um, break down the uh, bond process for you a little bit. Won't go into too much detail. Okay. Pretty much what happens is, so these private investors are pretty much, they're the bond holders. So what happens is they pretty much, you know, the uh, issuer had or whoever has an idea, these private investors pretty much, they give the money to the issuer and in turn the issuer gives that investor or bond holder a bond, mm-hmm. an actual bond. Right. You know, and when um, the issuer receives the money, the issuer issues the money to the borrower. The borrower, in turn, you know, pursuant to what kind of bond deal you have, uh, how it's structured and whatnot. Right. The um, borrower pretty much uh, give those payments to the trustee or paying agent. Okay. Paying agent would then, in turn, make those deposits to the depository trust company in New York, DTC. Okay. DTC would, in turn, pay back those private investors who invested in the bonds originally and to pay them back in semi-annual interest payments and principal payments. Gotcha, okay. So that's pretty much how the process works. But I definitely did want to, you know, some things that people don't um, realize is 
you know, investors have their ways of gauging, you know, is this a good city to invest in? Okay. And, you know, typically that's, you know, um, they look at um, economic development, planning, and preparedness. They okay. look at sustainable land and use capacities. Mm-hmm. They look at information and communications capacities and whether or not the community is a business-friendly environment. Now, a deeper um, uh, thing what people look at is a rating agency. And okay. in the United States, we have three major rating agencies. We have um, Standard & Poor's, mm-hmm. we have Moody's, and we have Fitch. Okay. So these three uh, rating agencies pretty much rate different you know, issuers, different governments, different municipalities. Mm-hmm. And pretty much the better your rating is, the lower your interest rate is when you right. issue the bonds. Right. And the more bonds you, know, you can issue. So just say, you know, and, you know, it goes down from, you know, triple A, double A, you know, single A, you know, and if the lower your rating is, the higher your interest rate will be and the less that you can and like the less money that you can issue out. Right. And typically, you know, these rating agencies, you know, when they rate you, they look at, you know, things as, you know, the economic well-being of the area. Like what's the median income? Mm -hmm. Like how concentrated is the community's dependence? on different industries and employers in that, you know, city. Like, what's the diversity of the tax base? The rate of population. Is the population more so younger, more so older? Right. You, you know, um, what is the diversity of the tax base? Um, and you're why? trying to gauge where that community is going as well. Definitely. Okay, for definitely, sure. Definitely, because you want to make sure you get your money back. For sure, and for sure. you definitely want to make sure that, you know, not only you get your money back, but is this a good, actually, investment decision? So the ratings are, you know, for the issuers, and it pretty much, you know, tells the different, you know, the various investors, is this something I should invest in gotcha. or not? Gotcha. So, uh, but we can get out of that, though. But I got you. I mean, but, you know, so, you know, to basically, you know, for a community to, to develop and sustain itself, you know, you really have to have a strategic economic, you know, um, development plan. Mm-hmm. You know, you even see in Memphis and all the way around, but we can stay on Memphis. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> you, you know, you see, you know, just random, you know, buildings or whatever business popping up and, you know, maybe a few years down the line. You know, now it's a vacant and abandoned building. Gotcha. Because, you know, instead of just trying to hold on for a second and get everyone at the table and have a strategic kind of plan on how we want to, you know, build this, you know, particular area up, mm-hmm. we just going to put some up to say we uh, did something. Gotcha. So, you know, that's definitely one of the issues here. But, you know, I feel like an economic, you know, plan or economic development plan, it definitely should you know, embody a short-term plan and a long-term plan. Mm-hmm. And then it requires extensive efforts, you know, to balance, you know, um, and maximize land space, infrastructure, and assets you have. I don't want to lose you no more, bro. So no, yeah, no, 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 you're good. We're good. Okay, we're, we're good. good. We're good. Okay, we're, good. Okay, we're good. Go okay, for it. Okay. We're good. We're good. Because uh, I'm, 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 I, I, you know, I, I'm learning myself. I, I'm taking it all in. Yes, and, and, and I'm also making connections because, you know, we I've heard of Moody's and Fitch. And, you know, standard and pours. And then you start talking about, you know, because basically what you're describing is like when an average person, like, you know, when you look at a company you want to invest in, this and the other, those bond issues are pretty much doing the same thing. Exactly. You're, you're looking at exactly. projections. You're looking at exactly. the current state of things, where it's going, this and the other. So, no, I got you. Exactly. I got exactly. you. I got you. Exactly. Exactly. I right, appreciate it. Yes, appreciate sir. it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so let me ask you this, man. You know, some say entrepreneurs need some type of form of education. No, no, networking is that any other. Some just say you just need idea and work ethic. Where do you stand on that, Mr. Lawyer Man? Uh, well, well, in that case, I'm going to give you the uh, official attorney answer. I would gotcha. say it depends. Gotcha. <laughs> I would say it depends. But, 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 you know, some type of formal education, you, you know, you know, sometimes, yes. I mean, it depends on what you want to pursue. For sure. You know, if you want to have a, you know, want to be a doctor, you know, engineer, lawyer, you have to have some kind of professional license. Mm-hmm. Um, but sometimes, no. You know, entrepreneurship, you know, has various avenues, you know, and degrees to it. So attorney entrepreneur, you know, is myself versus a auto body shop owner. Right. You know, similar grind, different mm-hmm. specialty. For sure. You know, but you do have to have some kind of foundational basic business acumen to, to sustain yourself structurally. For sure. You know, know when your annual filings have to be done with the Secretary of State, mm-hmm. Tennessee Department of Revenue. Right. You, you know, uh, how to get a line of credit from the bank. You know, how to get an accountant, you know, to, you know, balance and out of your books and everything, gotcha. you know, basic business stuff. So you don't know. So you don't know how to do You would not know how to know how to do that stuff personally, but mm-hmm. know who to go to to get it done. For sure. Um, but back to, you know, work ethic, you know, that's the number one. That's the number one attribute you need to have if you 
want to be successful in this entrepreneurial life. You, you know, um, whatever educational level you earn, your relentless, you know, work ethic, you know, your drive, your passion is what can keep you in business. Gotcha. So I guess that's one side of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Now to just address the other side, when you know, simply an idea and work ethic, I would say nope. Okay. Because it takes a lot more than that to successfully run a business. Fair enough. Um, entrepreneurship is a, you know, it's a mindset. It's a way of thinking and acting. Um, like we been saying all day, man, owning your own business, man, you, you, you're you on the clock 24-7. Mm -hmm. You know, like even if you're not like physically working, like you're always thinking about different ideas and different ways to progress and, you know, build your business and build your brand and, sure. you know, improve yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, entrepreneurship, my opinion, I guess is not something you do just because you have an idea. It's about, you know, the strength to believe in yourself. Um, it's about having the creativity and fortitude to challenge the status quo. Mm -hmm. and kind of step outside the box for a second, you know, and it's about imagining new ways to solve problems, create value for yourself, create value for your community. Um, it's, uh, entrepreneurs are, I think my dad always says, and what I definitely agree, entrepreneurs are able to, try to quote, right, are able to <laughs> transform their idea into a vision, able to transform their vision into a business, and able to transform their business into a legacy. There it is. Before we go to break, man, and I know you, I know this is a, a, a great day to ask, working on six hours of sleep. Man. What does the average day look like for you? <laughs> <laughs> man. Wish you had that cuss button right now. Uh, but uh, <laughs> go for it, man. Go I ain't gonna do it, man. I ain't gonna do it, man. I can keep going the air. I can keep going the air, man. But um, <laughs> but no, I mean, I mean, honestly, I don't even. It's kind of hard to you know even assess an average day for me because my day is kind of everywhere every day. But got you. I can you know so. But I mean Mondays, for example, Mondays I really try to get in here by six thirty. Okay. Because, you know, on Mondays we have our weekly staff meeting for the week. Mm -hmm. And those staff meetings, we have so much stuff going on. I imagine. Those uh, staff meetings, man, last about an hour. So I really try to, you know, how I try to maximize my day. Like, I really, sh like, strategically plan my day out. Like, mm -hmm. okay, if I'm going to be in this meeting for an hour here, then I need to get to work earlier or stay later, you know, to kind of at least work 10 hours a day kind of thing. Gotcha. You know, so Mondays, too, you know, here, um, you know, we ride downtown on Bill Street, man. Mm -hmm. So, you know... It sucks too because every Monday it never fails. You, you know, <laughs> our property is pretty much trashed. Okay. You, you know, from as far as you oh, know, beer right, bottles right, and some yeah, of everything, man. Yeah, so when I come in Monday, sure. I definitely spend about ten minutes cleaning up. First of all, gotcha. I can't. We can't have a law firm where you got beer not. bottles and a window sill and all kind of, of stuff not. like this. Right. So that's that. But you know, but you know, basically coming in, you know, early, you know, get my mind right, you know, kind of plan out my day. Um, our paralegal, she comes in at 8.30. So make mm -hmm. sure that before she comes in, she's got something to do. You know, she can't be run tooling her thumbs. Right. You, you know, um, so, you know, those are, you know, and just go throughout the day. I mean, so those are the Mondays, and we got our meeting days, I guess so to say. Mm -hmm. So, again, you know, as far as being strategic, like, we actually try to plan. If we have a meeting, we know we won't get done, like, much done that day. So we kind of try to put all of our meetings mm -hmm. either on the same day or either all of them towards the afternoon. Gotcha. Because mornings are so important. And that's why, you know, I get, you know, a lot of, you know, offers from STS <laughs> to definitely do these, uh, you know, breakfast meetings and these, you know, morning right. calls and everything. Right. And I always tell them, like, and tell them whoever, like, no, like, my mornings are so important because I need my mornings to get you know, my day Jump going. start. Right. Jump start, definitely, mm -hmm. because, you know, without a good morning, then the day could be gone. Right. For sure. For sure. All right, man. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. How you like being on the start of life, man? Man, I'm loving it, man. Uh, I am so. loving it. I need some more Coke, though. I'm going to eat some candy. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it. man, I'm loving it, man. Uh, cool. I'm cool. ready for part two, man. All right, let's do it. Let's yes, do sir. it. So I hope you're getting great value from Corbin's episode, but we got to pay some bills. Once again, my name is Dominic Lawson, and you're listening to The Startup Life.
Memphis, are you ready to level up? Join me May 5th as I lead the Al Academy's Entrepreneurship 101 Workshop. Together, we will create your elevator pitch, work on problem-solving techniques, and so much more to get your path of entrepreneurship off to a great start. All attendees will take home an entrepreneurship startup kit, coupons for additional resources, and a chance to win mentoring sessions with some of Memphis's top entrepreneurial minds. So join us May 5th at Union Center, 10th floor classroom at 1331 Union Avenue, Memphis, Tennessee, 38104. Can't wait to see you there. Check out the link in the show notes. All right, Startup Nation, so let's continue. So, Corbin, what's the best and worst piece of advice you've ever gotten? I've received a lot of good advice. Okay. You know, uh, definitely have. And then, um, you know, I like to kind of categorize them. So, four ways, you know, as far as grinding, being humble, being diligent, and having vision. Mm-hmm. And with the grind, it's for my mom. I uh, that. Again, gotcha. you only eat what you kill. So, if you ain't killing, you ain't eating. So kill the game. Mm -hmm. So right there, that just puts me in a mindset to grind it out every day. Gotcha. Because, you know, without that passion, without that will, without that grit and grind, man, you don't, you know, get your business going. Mm -hmm. As far as being humble, you are never as good as people say you are. And you're never as bad as people say you are. That is true. Always be grounded. Always be humble, man. Never get the big head. Do not let the people out here gas you up thinking you uh, big stuff or not, man. Right. Just know where you come from. Right. You know, always be grounded and be focused on what you want to achieve. This is from my dad, man. Um, you can never be too prepared. The best surprise is no surprise. I hear that. And it just goes with just doing your due diligence. Mm-hmm. You, you know, always be diligent. Always triple check things. Right. You know, just, you know, back to, you know, um, the previous question uh, when I answered, I said, man, if you make a mistake, Everything falls on you. I don't, mm-hmm. you know, it's just me and my father. So, you know, we have to be perfect with everything we do, you know, for a, multi- for a multitude of reasons, obviously. Mm-hmm. But, you know, just six Ps, man. So proper planning prevents piss poor performance. There it is. Definitely about that. Mm-hmm. Um, and with vision, entrepreneurship is the ability to recognize the bigger picture. Find where there's opportunity, then execute. Mm-hmm. And, you know, successful entrepreneurs, you know, don't focus on a quick dollar. Right. You know, and, and instead, you know, we look to ensure that each action is made is going towards, you know, just the overall, you know, goal, you know, of the business and of the vision. So let me ask you this, man. You know, what's a popular misconception about not just necessarily running a business, but running a law firm? Because I, I imagine there's people out there who's like, I'm being an attorney. I'm this, that, and the other. I'm going to play golf half the time. This, that, and the other. Kind of dispel some of the myths out there for us a little bit. Man, right there though. I mean, <laughs> hey, you, you know, you know, the 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 most popular misconception has to be that businesses run themselves. Mm, okay. You, you know, like again, if you don't come to work every day, you know, nothing gets done. Like you know, just talking about you know, I guess I guess my average day, you know, when I'm in you know my meetings. You know, two or three hours. I come back, the work is still there. Mm-hmm. And not only is the work still there, but I probably got new work that <laughs> right. just all of a sudden appeared on my desk that needs to be done, you know, right. before I leave today. A big corporation versus small business. If I'm working for a big corporation, I can probably go play golf. Mm-hmm. Because while I'm out playing golf and everything and enjoying myself, I got people back at my office working, you right. know, making sure that it gets done. For we sure. don't have that here. Gotcha. You know, we are the, uh, you know, the front lines, the cavalry, we everything. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I don't have the luxury, you know, of going out and playing golf, seeing, uh, you know, matinee movies on a Tuesday, <laughs> you know, stuff gotcha. like that. Right. You know, and another one is, you know, that if you own a business, you must be rich. You got it. <laughs> Man, right, right. <laughs> You know, so, right, yeah. you know, every, I know a little bit about that, yeah, yeah, just, for sure. you know, so like <laughs> every business, you, you, you know, owner, you know, entrepreneur, any, you know, whatever, uh, they have what I like to call a silent partner mm-hmm. and that silent partner name is uncle Sam mm-hmm. and uncle Sam, I swear he does no work ever. <laughs> Don't show up to work. Right. Ever. But he shall be like, run that, don't he? He gonna be like, run that money. <laughs> At the end, every year, he does not, he, he, he he's never late. He does not disappoint here every year. He, right. he like, run me that check, bro. <laughs> every right. year. And then, so, you know, not only just, you know, the, you know, taxes affiliated with the business, but mm-hmm. the overhead, man. The overhead. Mm-hmm. I, I, I won't tell you on air how much our, uh, you know, overhead is. Understood. But, I mean, just the mortgage for the building, mm. you know, the utility bills, you mm. know, the salaries, right. health insurance, you know, supplies, 
We can cut the lights off in here. Man, I, ain't yeah. trying, I ain't trying to run up there. Ain't that bad, brother. I ain't that bad. Ain't that bad, brother. <laughs> but, you know, just the custodial staff and other business sure. finishers, man. For like, sure. Whatever I get in, you know, that takes priority. Mm-hmm. So we have to pay those off. Absolutely. You know, and I do commend my father um, on this. In 40 years of him being in practice, he's never missed a paycheck for his employees. I he that. may not got paid. Mm-hmm. But he never missed a paycheck for his employees. And that's something I definitely plan to keep doing because that's the quickest way to lose your support and lose your employees. Absolutely. I'm glad you mentioned that. I want you to talk about that a little bit because a lot of times when people start companies, you know, they don't understand that the most important asset you have are the people that you employ. Mm-hmm. And not only that, how not just big, how massive a responsibility it is. To, to be responsible for somebody's livelihood. Mm-hmm. Talk about that a little bit, if you would. Man, it is pressure. Right. Because at the end of the day, you have a business to run. Mm-hmm. So to the point of, you know, affecting the person's livelihood, you know, you are their person's primary or only stream of income. Right. And it gets extremely tough when it has to come down to the decision that, you know, you have to let the person go because mm-hmm. it has gotten to a point that they're starting to hurt the business. Right. And, you know, I do commend him and I'm learning that from him too. You know, he is the most patient and understanding person, you know, when it comes down to business that you will probably ever meet. And the boss has to be that way, especially a boss in a small business. For sure. You can't be, you know, cutthroat with everybody. Right. You, 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 <laughs> you have to try to understand and, you know, like I said, sympathize and empathize, you know, but at the end of the day, you still have a business yeah. to run. And, you know, if it gets to a point that you're starting to take advantage of the business because of right. our kindness, then, you know, then we need to have a conversation. We need gotcha. to talk and let you go. Right. Thank you for sharing that. Because like, like I said, a lot of times people, you know, they they go into business and they're all about having somebody working for them. Yeah. But not understanding that, like, that's a massive responsibility. It's and, a massive responsibility. Right. And, you know, just like small things like that, like our employees here, we all say we work together. We're on the same team. I hear that. We're like, hear you that. guys don't work for us. We're on the same right. team here. Like, you, you know, we give you guys full access to everything. You're never in the dark about anything. Mm-hmm. You, you know, because, you know, we have, uh, it's only four of us here. Right. If we're not on the same page, then uh, this train ain't moving. Right. And we need to sit down and talk about it. There it is. Let me ask you this. Based, you know, we talked about employees and company culture and this, that, the other. What do you look for in a person before you bring them into carpenter law? Because I imagine, like, they have to, they they not only have to do the job, but they kind of have to fit the story, tell the story, and this, that, and the other, through their work, of course, mm-hmm. right? So what do you, what goes into that process? We look for a few things. Okay. Um, first and foremost, work ethic. Okay. If you're not willing to, <laughs> if, if, if you're not willing to, man, grind it out and then you know really put the pedal to the metal, then you already out the door. I sense a common theme with that for definitely, sure. For definitely, sure, definitely, for sure. Uh, you, you know, <laughs> second, second is you know definitely your professionalism. You for know, sure. our clients that we service, you know, they're usually you know you know nonprofits, corporations, different uh, governments and municipalities, and mm-hmm. again, you know, we're a you know a firm of two lawyers, two black lawyers Mm -hmm. and everything we do has to be perfect absolutely no mistakes you know not only for them but the people who regulate the work we do in our internal revenue code Mm -hmm. securities and exchange admission you know Mm -hmm. you know uh sec so you know they don't play um no they do not you you know so whatever you know document or offering document we put out it 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 has to be perfect to the t multitasking number three you know you have to be able, like you said, to be the master juggler. You have to be able to multitask. I mean, when I never give our employees just one thing to do. I give you three or four things to do, and I prioritize it for you. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you know, I give them three or four things to do, but I have 12 to 15 things to of do. Course. Of you course. You know, so just being able to multitask and navigate through that while being on the top of your game for each one of those. Mm-hmm. Because if you miss one thing, then that's a problem. I'm gonna tell you a quick story to, Go put, it in, put, it, to, to put it in perspective. Go so for it. a constituent of mine, uh, who's an investment banker, mm-hmm. uh, he told me a uh, situation that um, happened uh, down in a, a certain jurisdiction. Gotcha. And you know, that certain colleague of his got audited by the SEC. Mm. They just, one day just 
hey, how you doing? Uh, and just <laughs> came on in and went through all of their books and everything. So the reason they did that was because their continuing disclosure um, was inaccurate. Gotcha. So with the continuing disclosure, um, it was this, uh, I think it was an official statement they may have put out uh, a few years ago. Okay. And a couple of sentences that they put in this 400-page document was not accurate to how it should have been, you know, pretty much that fact in, in, in 2018 this year. Gotcha. So pretty much, you know, with the SEC, you, when you are in default or with anything, report it. Right. They didn't report it. They thought, you know, we can kind it, of... It's a few it. sentences. It'll... Nah, bro. Right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, so talking about sentences, I make sure I don't miss a comma. Gotcha. You, you know, gotcha. Our, you know, in, 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 in our stuff, man, because it's, because it's really that serious. And then, mm-hmm. you know, fourth is consistency. You have to be consistent, man. Like, if you have a, you know, a good day Monday and you grind it out, don't come in here BS on Tuesday and Wednesday. And say, oh, well, I grind hard Monday. I'm good. You know, no, 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 no. Like, you, you, right. you know, come in every day, you know, ready to work. And then, you know, don't grind hard one day and cancel out what you did right. by not grinding the very next day. There it is. How about sure. you as an entrepreneur put yourself in the mindset to grind hard every day, to grind hard that you're actually getting yourself ahead by a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. So now you can take a day off, spend with the family. Take, right. take a day off to go support a friend or take a day off to – Go out there and establish some potential new clients and some sure. new opportunities. For sure. I got time now to go to this networking event tonight. I'm going to go on hit it and see what I can do. There it see is. what I can do. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but I guess what we look for, you know, those four things primarily, but our interview process too. Okay. So I have interviewed um, um, quite a few people here over, over the years, but, you know, our, our, our interview process, um, I wouldn't say me and uh, Pops play good cop and bad cop. Okay. But, you know, we definitely do have a strategy. Okay. You know, um, he definitely, you know, comes in and, you know, gets started and, you know, talks to him. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, um, we make sure the person is, you know, definitely comfortable. Let them know that this will be, you know, real, kind of informal and you know, all they even know it ain't. Right. You know, uh, and just trying to see how you're reacting. With it's you formal do. informal. Right. And, <laughs> gotcha. And, 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 you know, one person failed for that one time. Um, oh. Yeah. Oh, no. So in, in, in the interview, when we said that, her first a couple of sentences were like, yeah, um, you know, well, I'm glad you said that. And I do want to warn you guys that, you know, some people have uh, called me crazy in, in the past. You know, I and she used to be in the service and everything. Got gotcha. you. You know, and, and right. all that. And then she just playing, you know, but I don't think I'm crazy. And just kind of was like that. And we were like, okay. So when, so when that happened. Right. It was a short interview, of course, but right. we couldn't just get out and walk out the room. Right. So, you, you you know, we gave her, you know, an abbreviated interview. Understood. It was about 15 Understood. minutes. And, you know, we definitely gave her a chance to redeem herself, but it just kept getting worse. Gotcha. And, you know, but our actual process is to have the initial interview. And if you do good, do, do good in that, we will um, bring you back for a performance interview. Mm-hmm. And the performance interview is pretty much we'll set up this module on our uh, computer uh, with the documents, the one I showed you. So you okay, know, yeah, yeah. So like the documents I showed you, we make those documents. Mm-hmm. So as far as you know, the different you know charts, graphs that go in there, and you know just the text itself, you know, um, and those documents get you know you know sent around through the working group. People have different computer systems. Mm-hmm. So when they you know may make edits to the document and save it. For example, you might be saving your document um, from a Mac, or you might be saving your document from like Microsoft Word. You know, a document from 97 through 2003, but we got Microsoft Word 2018 right. here, whatever. So, so that's messing up the document. So you need to be able to, mm-hmm. you know, configure through those different sales of the document. For sure. And make the, you know, document perfect and look, you know, presentable. And if you can't pass that test, then what's, you know, we can't even use you. Like you right. have to, the jobs that, you know, I mean, we got the legal stuff. On, on lock we got that right you know but we do definitely you know need help of people with you know computer skills who can definitely come in and do work like that those are the type of employees we typically look for for sure you know you, when you were talking about that it reminded me of something another attorney said he said that if he could go he said he, he said that the best uh degree that attorneys should pursue is english because of all the mm-hmm. documents and because mm-hmm. you talked about not missing a comma, this, that, and the, right. Man, so, yeah. So, so it, it put me in that mindset. And I also had a question. Uh, yes, sir. Who's scarier, the IRS or the SEC? 
I tell you, I'm right. uh, uh, hey, You know, we, 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 you, you guys are equally scary. I respect both of you regulatory bodies. I don't want no problems over here in uh, Memphis, Tennessee. I cut it out. No, I just, I, I, okay. God bless y'all all. And we just going to, yeah. So, <laughs> gotcha. All right, man. So let me ask you this. We're going to kind of shift a little bit. Given our, you know, political climate, this and the other things that go on in Memphis, this and the other. Do entrepreneurs have an obligation to take on or give commentary on social issues? An obligation to give commentary? I say no, because some okay. people don't need to be talking publicly on any issues. Fair enough. Let alone social issues. <laughs> Fair enough. But, you know, an obligation to take on social issues. Mm-hmm. If you mean by, you know, advocating, you know, in our community or getting um, politically involved, then yes. Okay. And, you know, and I would say entrepreneurs, you know, have that obligation and obligation to show service, participate in society, Mm -hmm. you you know, an obligation to give back and set the example. And you can do that in a couple of ways. One way is by, you know, investing in our communities. Mm -hmm. You know, know the issues affecting our locale. I hear that. You know, we we, we know we got poverty, you know, child poverty, socioeconomic disparities, you know, Mm -hmm. as far as, you know, housing, education. I can go on. Lack of, you know, all around opportunity and access, pretty much. For sure. You, you know, um, but invest in our communities by actively participating, you know, to remedy these issues. Mm-hmm. You know, research various organizations doing good stuff already in the community, man, doing great work. Absolutely. You know, spread the word, you know, to our communities about leadership development programs, educational and job readiness programs. You know, we're in a very unique time locally and nationally. Mm-hmm. Um, we can, uh, <laughs> stuff can get uh, better. Or it can get uh, tremendously worse. Understood. And I really want people to realize that, man. And there is an abundance of talent in Memphis. I've been hearing my whole life that Memphis has so much potential. Mm-hmm. And, man, it's about time we realize that potential. I hear that. I hear that. You know, I mean, people in Memphis, you know, they just, you know, people are kind of in their own world. You just, you know, go to work, you know, get your check, go home. And the problems in this community, if it doesn't affect you, you know, the old people mindset, I well, I mean, they're not affecting me. Right. You know, I'm good. My immediate family is good. Mm-hmm. You know, so why should I help out? Why should I get involved? Right. Um, you know, but none of those, but none of these issues that we're currently facing locally or nationally will, you know, ever improve unless we collectively participate in society, collectively get involved, collectively get engaged, mm-hmm. and collectively care to really improve and progress our people, our communities, sure. and, and our society. Mentor somebody. Mm-hmm. You know, before I get into that, you know, some people, I guess, don't really understand what mentoring means. Okay. Mentoring is more than just taking a kid to the greatest game, taking a kid for ice cream, and, you know, talking about how messed up his or her life is. And, All right, well, good to see you. Right. And just go back home. Mm-hmm. You know, you shouldn't have the, it's called mentoring, but you shouldn't have the word mentor in your head. It should be more so developed. I hear that. You know, like we, you know, we got to invest in our youth, man. That's, that is our future. We say that, but we need to act like that. Right. You know, um, we need to develop them, train them to be leaders, you know, teach them the importance of taking life seriously early on, Mm -hmm. letting them know that, hey, you're, you're a black male, you're 14 years old right now, but you make one mistake. You not 14, you're another black man in the system. You 18 years old, you'll get charged. We had a story of that with STS, mm-hmm. you know, one of right. our first men, uh, sure. mentees that, that, that happened with him, you know, teach the, 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 the youth the importance of having a strong work ethic, you know, the importance of the, like distinguishing yourselves from the herd, mm-hmm. you know, the importance of embracing your individual, you know, you know, you know, talents, you know, your God given abilities, you know, and making the best of that, you know, be authentic. And, you know, I mean, why? Well, why? I mean, because you both, we both, we both know to obtain employment, you know, a job or a career or start a business, you have to have a skill, and, right? You know, not only any skill, but a marketable skill for sure. And if you want to own a business, you have to have more than mm-hmm. one marketable skill. You have to have multiple marketable skills, right? And you have to be able to perform those marketable skills better than the average person. And you know, mentoring should not be only seen as you know adults mentoring the youth. It should also be seen, you know, as professional and professional mentoring. I hear that. So, you know, seasoned professionals should, you know, purposely, you know, want to take, you know, you know, junior or associates, you know, under his or her wing 
in their respective fields and, and teach them the game. Mm -hmm. You know, make sure that they're knowledgeable and cognizant, you know, who to talk to, who not to talk to, you know, that they're, you know, that they have the wherewithal to, you know, not only survive, but to thrive in their business and grow. Right. And so when that season professional leaves, you know, the person that, or people that he or she trained up, they're ready to step in his or her place. Or if not, they're ready to just go on and be great elsewhere. Right. But, you know, mentoring, in my opinion, it does not just stop with the youth. You, you know, it, it definitely, and we should definitely put more emphasis on that. Gotcha. Especially in Memphis, man. For sure. Because a lot of people, you know, in particular positions have the mindset, I don't want to, you know, train or mentor anyone because that person is my competition. They might come take my spot. Right. And, you, you know, <laughs> it's like, personally, they like, you know, if you're confident in your abilities and what you can do. There it is. You ain't got to worry about nothing. Right. You know, so... That's that on that, I guess. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, I I think we'll make that a nice segue to the next question. Who are your mentors, Corbett? So I gotta, I mean, of course, go with you know my mother and father, of course, and everything, of course, of course. Uh, and my brother as well, man. Okay. Know, my uh, older brother Charles, um, he is actually the finance guru of the family. Okay. Uh, we do municipal finance, but you know, uh, but he is like um, he works at a uh, FedEx uh, in the Treasury Department. Um, oh, okay. But he is, you know, he's worked with you know a few corporations here as a financial analyst. Like mm -hmm. he's very, I guess, finance is just like his innate talent attribute. Um, gotcha. You know, he's putting me on game as far as you know learning how to watch the market and. You know, learning how to invest in multiple things because, mm -hmm. you know, if you really want financial freedom and you really want to build, you know, generational wealth for yourself, you got to have more than one stream of income coming in. There it is. And, you know, my goal is to get at least seven. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know, of course, one here, then I do definitely want to have, you know, some, you know, some investments, you right. know, with real property, you know, some, you know, mutual funds, stocks and bonds and everything. Mm -hmm. and, you know, that's something that, you know, I'm learning, you know, have some baseline foundational knowledge, but that's mm -hmm. what he's an expert in. Gotcha. And, you know, and I I won't say any more names because if I leave someone out, someone will be pretty mad with me. So, right. but I will say that I was blessed to have, you know, a lot of, you know, uh, role models and influences coming up. And not only just, you know, um, you know, um, with people that I can just reach out and touch and have conversations with, but influences as far as you know what i saw on tv mm -hmm. you know as far as you know with uh you know music you know what i heard coming up and everything you know For sure um and that's crazy because you know the youth today they don't have nearly as many role models and positive influences as we did coming up so right even something so small man is you know i can remember me watching you know i grew up on you know martin fresh prince of bel-air mm -hmm. the real world the cosby show mm -hmm. you know what they watching now reality tv you right. know love and hip-hop and stuff like that right and if you habitually watch stuff like that over the years that's gonna try it's, it's gonna change your way of thinking it's gonna pretty much shape how you view things, how you think, how you act. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, I still, you know, <laughs> jokingly, I mean, like, I still, you know, spit lines from the Fresh Prince every once in a while. We man. all do. You know, exactly. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> so, you know, us doing that, I, you know, you know, hate to say, but I can see them repeating lines from Love and Hip Hop or something like that five years from now. You gotcha. know, all these reality TV shows is, you know, not educational, that's not motivational, that's right. it, not giving them anything positive to look up to, not seeing people that look like them in a positive light, mm -hmm. unless it's sports or entertainment. For sure. Uh, real quick, have you ever had to turn down a client before? And you don't have to name names, you know, but if you got a story, share. Hell yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> man. That, that bad, me, huh? Yeah, man, let me tell you. I mean, <laughs> but, you know, all problems ain't worth it. For sure. Right, right. All money ain't good money. You, mm -hmm. you can't help everybody, you know, but... To answer the question, yes, sir, I have definitely turned down a client or two in my gotcha. day. Um, gotcha. You know, and as well as potential conflict of interest and everything. For sure. No, course, no, I understood but, that. Well, if you can, you mm -hmm. know, just, you know, in general, kind of explain what are some red flags to look for when you just, when it gets to the point where like, nah, this ain't going to work. One, if someone says that, hey, um, schedule a meeting, you know, so in business, you know, my time is valuable and I respect the person, you know, that their time is valuable. It's Absolutely. Just, it's valuable if Absolutely. not more valuable. Absolutely. You know, so if we schedule a meeting, you know, and one, you know, the meeting's at five or something like that and you come at six, mm. that's a problem. That's a red flag. Gotcha. Well, we schedule a meeting and I don't hear from you at all and that's another red flag. Sure. If 
you know, and we'll work with almost anyone, you know, and because we want to actually service and help people. So mm -hmm. even though we primarily do municipal finance, for sure, if someone comes in with different legal issues. I mean, we'll try to solve them ourselves um, or we'll try to, you know, definitely steer them in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, been times that not times it's still currently like I probably you know give so much free legal advice out mm. you know just to be able to help people and you know I'm, I'm and then I but I, but I let them know and put them in, in, in perspective I say look you know we just <laughs> talked about an hour right, right there. I gave you all that <laughs> another attorney would have charged you about five hundred dollars or something like absolutely. that absolutely you absolutely. know but you know so don't take advantage of that you can't call me anytime with no stuff like that because right. I got stuff to do but right. I don't mind helping out definitely because gotcha. that is you know that I feel like that's our duty for sure you know definitely that you know service people help out mm -hmm. and you know educate the community on or people in general on just various things thank you for sharing that man yes, i appreciate that because like that that's one of the things that people kind of you know deal with when they run a company like when is that point where you, like it's time to go ahead and cut this off so mm -hmm. i appreciate that all entrepreneurs have a superpower, man. What's yours and why? Man, the ability to stay up. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> man. Gotcha. But, but no, man, uh, I say two things. I say my mind and my heart. Okay. So uh, my mind, you know, gives me the mental strength. It gives me, you know, the vision. It, uh, it, it, it enables me to be so strategic. Mm -hmm. And everything I do, man, you know, don't no matter how small or big the obstacle or your project is. For sure. You know, um, you have to be strategic in everything you do, you know, as far as, you, you know, from how you get up in the morning, how you want to, you know, you know, uh, conduct your day, you know, um, coming into different meetings, what I want to talk about. You know, how I'll be able to, you know, navigate the different conversations. Mm -hmm. Walking into a room, oh, like, okay, who going to be in the room? You know, just right. you know, just mapping out and always being strategic and thinking, and you know, thinking five, six steps ahead because you have to. Right. Um, you know, I always say, you know, think before you speak, analyze before you act. And I will go with my heart because uh, I say that gives me my physical strength. You know, gotcha. it, it, it pumps that passion into me, it pumps that resilience into me, it pumps that grit and grind into me. Mm -hmm. And you know, it pumps that compassion and it pumps the compassion, which is good because if it didn't pump the compassion into my heart, I feel like I probably wouldn't be as civically involved as I am. I hear that. And I feel like I wouldn't work as hard as I do. Understood. You know, because um, you know, it's, it's crazy how much I'm motivated off seeing, you know, my people hurt and struggle. And, you know, not saying, you, you, you know, that I have a sense of guilt and nothing like that. I don't at all. No, I got you. You know what I'm saying? But I want to do what I can and give it my all to make sure that, you know, not only can I, you know, set the example and all that stuff, but what I'm doing can actually tangibly fix the weight to change. Right. You're, and, you're sympathizing with people who look like you. Definitely. That, it's definitely. understood. Understood. Yeah, for sure. So this is the point of the show, man. You know, you got any business ventures, anything you want to promote? Floor is yours to do that, man. Man, I got quite a few actually, man. man not, throw it out there. I'm not gonna lie, good throw, brother. Throw it out there. Um, throw it out there. I know you got your hands in a lot of stuff, so man, <laughs> it's too much stuff. Sometimes I'm gonna have to uh, put them back in my pocket, man, or something like that, and walk away. But uh, <laughs> but I do want to plug the um, April Fourth Foundation. Okay. Um, this is one of uh, my nonprofits. I've been on this. Uh, I've been a board member with this organization for about six years now. This okay. is my sixth year. Mm -hmm. But it's a five hundred one c three, you know, nonprofit grassroots organization. Okay. You know, we throw our annual uh, commemorative banquet uh, for MLK um, every year on April fourth. This okay. year will be on on April third. Mm -hmm. um, but pretty much, uh, we recognize individuals uh, that promote excellence in the field of economic justice and equality. I hear that. You know, that was um, that Dr. King dreamed about. Mm -hmm. And I know this year, uh, like I said, we have an annual um, banquet on April 3rd um, okay. at the Hilton Hotel. Um, we're honoring uh, five individuals this year. We're going to give them I, the R I Am a Man Award. Okay. So that award is presented to individuals pretty much who continue to strive to keep Dr. King's dream alive and bring okay. it into being. For sure. You know, um, so this year we're going to honor J.C. Lee Douglas Sr., mm -hmm. James Charles Evers, uh, Chris Christopherson, Joan uh, Moore Holland, and Congressman Charles Rangel. Okay. And so... Mm. Past right. recipients of the reward been like, you know, Bobby Seale, you know, gotcha. you know, Diane Nash, Congressman right. Harold Ford, Senior, Judge Joe Brown, Harry Belafonte, Bill Lucy, you mm -hmm. know, people of that magnitude. For man. sure. With STS Enterprise, man, mm -hmm. shout out, first of all, to 
first of all, shout out to you for even, you know, wanting to be a part of, you know, Absolutely. STS Enterprise Corporation, Absolutely. man. We definitely need more, you know, powerful, you know, intelligent, driven black brothers and black sisters, you know, definitely wanting to get back and invest in our community. For sure. But for the audience, if you mm-hmm. don't know, STS Enterprise is pretty much a 501c3 leadership development organization dedicated to developing and empowering the next generation of leaders. Um, so we focus primarily on um, high school students and uh, students at the collegiate level. And we have our mentee membership drive coming up. So if you're interested in uh, uh, being a mentee, um, high school, uh, college, um, go to our website, www.stsenterprise.org. And you can apply to be a mentee there and as well as mentor. We mm-hmm. have our mentor recruitment drive going on, I believe, starting next month. So Absolutely. just do the same thing. Hit our website. Um, if you want to become a partner in excellence with us, we have a, a current goal of to get 500 people who will give us $10 a month. Mm-hmm. Um, December 1st, 2017, we were um, in business for five years. So it was our five-year anniversary. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I've been with STS. This is my fourth year with STS. So pretty much um, I was with, uh, you know, uh, the boss man, uh, Mr. Jamie Calhoun, and the boss man, Mr. Alton Cryer. Mm-hmm. Uh from the uh, jump, it was a funny story how we met too. Uh, okay. But uh, so I mean, well, <laughs> real quick. So gotcha. it was my I think second year of law school, man. We're well, going into my second year. I was on this criminal justice panel. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, talking and then after the panel, they just walked up to me, man. And then um, they just came up and said, "Hey, man, you know, we like we had to stay on that panel, man. You spoke the real all uh, that." And I'm like, "All right, yeah, I appreciate that." And they said, "We got this organization, and you know, with the youth." And then. My eyes got so big because I was looking for something like that. Gotcha. And I was like, okay. And I, and like I always say, God has a plan. Everything happens for a reason. And, you know, when that happened, I'm like, okay. And then just seeing how genuine those guys are and everything and how genuine, loving, and embracing and progressive the culture is with STS. For sure. How could I say no? How, could I, how, how would I not want to be a part of that? Right. So that's where we are now. We got two big events coming up. We got our March Madness three on three basketball tournament, mm-hmm. uh, March twenty fourth this Saturday actually. Uh, it's gonna be at the uh, Mam Center in South Memphis, the Memphis Athletic Ministries, on um, Ball Road. Um, if you want a team, we currently have eleven teams now, We're trying to get sixteen. So come on, <laughs> people need about five more. It ain't number fifty dollars. Right. Just you know, please come out, support, show their love. It's free admission. So if you don't play, just come out and just be there. You, you right. know, just be a part of the atmosphere. Just, you know, because we're definitely going to give, you know, uh, giveaways, going to give away stuff like, you know, laptops, you know, mm-hmm. different, you know, gift cards and everything of that sort. And uh, bringing out the leaders um, is our um, annual collegiate event. We call this the biggest collegiate event in the Mid-South. Mm-hmm. Uh, we bring out about 200 uh, college students. Uh, this year is our fifth annual. Nice. Uh, bringing out the leaders. Um, special guest appearances uh, from Mayor Jim Strickland, uh, Mayor Mark Luxell. It'll be moderated by Kayla Graff. Um, and on the panel, we'll have Andrea Duncan from Carrier Corporation, Elizabeth Lemons from Epicenter, Donald Comer from FedEx, and Caleb Park from Cushman and Wakefield. So Project MI is, um, I'm part of this organization. This organization was created by um, Professor Demetria Frank. Mm-hmm. Uh, Professor Demetria Frank, you know, amazing woman, mm-hmm. you know, intelligent, ambitious, you know, beautiful on the inside and out. You know, grassroots is a, you know, it's a grassroots effort to eliminate mass incarceration in the Mm -hmm. school to prison pipeline, you know, while addressing, you know, racial injustice in the criminal justice system. So they have a few things going on. Um, One is their legislative and policy campaign. And that is where you're giving training on how the legislative process actually works. You know, how to research and stay updated with current legislation. Uh, they have their youth um, advocates digital campaign. So we're different Project in my members or, you know, just supporters that mm-hmm. will call, you know, these legislatures, you know, to support or oppose a particular bill. Gotcha. You know, they have their narrative committee, uh, which is doing now, which is pretty cool, man. So it's uh, they're building our community's uh, campaign. This is an art competition. OK. So um, the submission deadline's passed. Oh, now. But, okay. you know, but pretty much it's open to all Shelby County high school students mm-hmm. to pretty much express, you know, uh, you know, ideas on how to improve their communities. Um, but those selected entries will be premiered at the uh, first annual Youth Activism and Leadership Summit this oh, nice. summer. Um, it's going to be called My City, My Voice. It's going to be in okay. Lawn On College, July 28th at 9 a.m. Um, but it's for all high school students in the city. The goal is to get about 200 high school students out, man. Just, just come out, you know, um, with that we'll have 
a Memphis Leadership Panel, uh, Know Your Rights Theater Session, workshops on conflict resolution, self-advocacy, and youth activism. I hear that. And, you know, this is an event that, you know, um, I hope Project MI is able to sustain and keep going because this is, you know, pivotal, and I think that this can greatly benefit the youth in Memphis. Um, last thing with Project MI, they have the Youth Advocacy Program. Okay. Takes place at, Har- at, at, at Carver High School. You know, Carver High School now is an alternative high school. Right, right. You know, so, you know, but... That's the only, you know, re-entry program in Shelby County Schools. Okay. So, you know, of course, targets youth who have been informally incarcerated. Um, the focus of the program is to get students career and college ready. Um, I think they currently serve about 40 students. Um, you know, their number fluctuates, though, due to, to the transitioning back to For Hope sure. Academy and some to traditional regular high schools, whatever. Sure. But if you want to become a member, uh, a mentor in Project MI, just email Memphis at gmail.com and you do like a you know a, a short training uh, you know you can't okay. just you can't just go, go and walk in there like right. that you know you know how we do in STS <laughs> right, you, gotta, sure. you gotta have some kind of training right. you know right but, for sure you know which I think uh, is important though right because because uh, you can't just have people just come out the street I mean, I mean they may have good intentions or sometimes they don't have good intentions right. you, you need to vet that out right so no that's exactly. understood and that's understood definitely you, you know what I'm saying <laughs> you know and for personal gain and only for any, and also for the safety of the children too for man, sure because for these sure. folk out here crazy they are and you never know what a person is thinking what mm-hmm. they you know like you said arterial motives and whatnot. but um but follow uh, Project MI on, on their Facebook page, facebook.com slash group slash Project MI. And their mm-hmm. website is uh, projectmimemphis.com. But I do want to shout out some other Memphis organizations doing their thing too, man. For sure. You, you know, um, got to shout out Black Lives Matter mm-hmm. with uh, Attorney Erica Perry with the, you know, the Bell Fund. You know, that is just one great initiative that they do over there, Black Lives Matter. So kudos and salute to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, Living Grace, you know, with uh, Shalia Harris, Mm -hmm. Um, Campaign for School Equity uh, with Mandel Grinter, you know, Stand for Children, you know, Mm -hmm. Cardell, you know, uh, C3 um, with Keadrian Franklin, Bridges, Mm -hmm. Mid-South Peace and Justice Center, uh, Street Ministries, Mm -hmm. uh, Black Girls Code, you know, just organizations like that are already out here doing the work. Right. You know, so people need to definitely get involved with organizations like this and join them. Make them stronger because the work that they're doing is actually work that's actually benefiting the community. For sure. And more people, if you're looking to get involved, do that. Right. (laughs) Lastly, and very important, I had I got to talk about voting. Okay. You know, he goes without saying voting is very important. You know, voting is one of, you know, our greatest power as mm-hmm. uh, citizens. Early voting in you uh, in Shelby County is April the 11th through April 26th. And just a few um, stats, a few statistics to show you how <laughs> how it needs work. You right. know, the primaries in, you know, 2014, man, out of the 533,000 people that were registered, only 18% of people voted. That number is just crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. And, you know, the primaries in 2016, you know, out of all the people registered, 30, 30% voted. Mm-hmm. You know, like, people have to understand the importance of voting, especially in local elections. Absolutely. Local elections are Absolutely. more important than mm-hmm. national elections. Yes, they are. Because local elections control your day-to-day life. Mm-hmm. So people not only vote, but Know your congressperson for your district. Know your state representative. Know your city council person. Know your county commissioner. It gets to a point that, you know, actually, I can't. <laughs> a lot of the people I talk to don't even know who that person is. And, you know, that's the person that you need to talk to to get things done in your community. Right. They, that person is your voice of your district or your respective community. Mm-hmm. If that person does not know of your gripe or your, com- or, or your you know, complaint or whatnot, how would that, you know, get improved? Right. And especially if they already don't care to fix it anyway. So we need to hold them accountable and hold ourselves accountable. For sure. Um, but, I mean, let's just be sure to support, you know, the candidates, especially the black candidates, you know, the young black progressive candidates like mm-hmm. London Lamar, you know, running for state representative District 91, you know, Attorney Van Turner, you know, Ramesh Akbari, mm-hmm. you know, um, Mr. Mikhail Lowry running for County Commission District uh, with seven. Attorney mm-hmm. J.B. Smiley running for the same district. Mm-hmm. Both of those, you know. District 8, by the district way. District 8, yeah. I apologize. <laughs> no uh, worries. Mikhail, J.B., don't get me. <laughs> but, you know, both of those, you know, are, you know, dope brothers and dope individuals, mm-hmm. man. Very intelligent, you know. 
Um, Tammy Sawyer, you know, for sure. You know, mm-hmm. Michael Scruggs r- r- running for um, school boy. I think mm-hmm. District 1. Yeah. You know, but if you want to, you know, see who's running and what district and whatnot, just go to www.shelbyvote.com. And they'll give you the list of everyone running, you know, and whichever Democratic you know, or, or, or Republican Party and right. what position they're running for. But, you know, I mean, people get actively engaged. Right. You, you know, actively participate, actively use your voice. You know, again, hold the leaders and yourself accountable, mm-hmm. especially hold the leaders accountable. Be tenacious. Be patient. You know, nothing changes overnight, man. Right. Um. And people who, you know, want to be out here and, and, you know, effectuate change, so to say, get out your own way. You know, your idea is not the only idea. There it is. You're going to be wrong sometimes. <laughs> it's, you okay. Know, it's, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Like, it's okay. <laughs> it's, 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 it's more than one way to skin a cat. You can, you can, you can, you can walk and chew gum at the same time. How do you always say, mm-hmm. you know, but, and, and, and have fun while doing it. Why not? Have fun <laughs> while doing it too, man. You know, but. Before I stop talking, I know I've been talking a lot. It's all good. Might be like five interviews here. But uh, <laughs> I just want to you definitely, you know, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lawson. Thank you again to your lovely wife, Kenda. I mean, I want to shout out Al's, man. You, you know, you guys do a lot of great things. You know, as far as, you know, I, I, I check out your website, man. I, I listen to your podcast all the time just to get that knowledge. I love what you're doing with the podcast. Thank you. For not only giving me the opportunity, but thank you for you know giving everyone else the opportunity. Thank you for like providing this platform Absolutely. for people to come and you know talk and be able to you know give different perspectives for sure, and you know to get out there and really put it out there because I mean you're a man of integrity. I mean what I say it won't be you know skewed in a different way. You know mm-hmm. you're gonna put the stuff out there how I said it fair and everything. And it's how your it needs story. To be. Exactly. It's your story. Exactly. And, you know, how the way the media does things nowadays, <laughs> I mean, hey, you know, so it's, so when I say that you're a breath of fresh air, <laughs> you are a breath of fresh air, man. And, you know, we all, and how you say on your website, man, learn, grow, and innovate. There it is. You know, they definitely spoke to me, and it's something that I definitely live by. Um, you know, it's been an absolute pleasure, good brother. Likewise. I really Likewise. appreciate you. And again, thank you for the opportunity, man. I appreciate you, man. Thank you for those kind words. I'm pretty sure Kenda appreciates those words as well. Any parting advice for an entrepreneur, just anybody out there, man, just looking to try to better themselves. Any parting advice? Get up and get it. And if you're scared, push on anyway. I hear that. Step outside your box. Step outside your comfort zone. Real progression is uncomfortable. Absolutely. You, you know, real progression is uncomfortable. You're going to fall a lot. You're going to get a lot of scrapes on your knees, your elbows, <laughs> and all that. You know, hopefully you don't get any black eyes, nothing like that along the way. Right. But you never know, man. But whatever happens, dust yourself off. And again, every successful entrepreneur has one thing in common, that they never gave up. There so never give up. Keep pushing. Keep grinding. I appreciate that, man. Thank you for this very content-rich episode of Start of Life. <laughs> I really appreciate it, man. Yes, I feel like now I gotta go crack open a law book or something. I now, mean, so. I mean, you know, you know, you know, and you know, I, I know I said a lot, man. Hope your phone battery is not about to die. It is, uh-uh. but it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. No, you know. no, seriously, I appreciate you. I appreciate what you do in our community, and I appreciate your time on the Start of Life. I appreciate it, man. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And if you ever want to have me back, man, absolutely. Anytime you absolutely. have a number, good brother, anytime, you just let me know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, so here's my final take. Corbin is one of my favorite guests because he's one of those entrepreneurs that's not only well-versed in his own craft, but many other different areas of interest to him as well, which allows me as a host to ask you know, different follow-up questions that I normally am able to ask. Corbin is very intuitive and insightful And you can tell that he's a lawyer because he's very detail oriented. And I can't wait to see what he does with Carpenter Law moving forward. If you want to let us know what you think about our show, have an idea for a show topic, or like to advertise on our show, send us a message on the Startup Life Podcast Facebook page. And while you're there, like and follow our page as well. It's a new way for us to engage with you, Startup Nation, and really grow our community. The link is here in the show notes. Subscribe to the show as it can now be heard on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, and SoundCloud. If you are listening on iTunes and you find our content valuable, please give us a five-star rating as it will help us climb the charts and help more people find our show. And hey, if you have an idea, 
be about their life, the startup life. 